Hello everybody and welcome to Josie's Art School episode number 192 and I am here to share with you our newest project. If you have my art kit, thank you so much for purchasing. We are going to be doing tropical fruit. And if you have not even heard of my art kit, make sure and go to Josie's Art School. Josie's Art School. And check out all of the kits that I have. You can choose or you can have a summer, winter, spring, fall, holiday theme, okay? Um, and if you don't have either one of those, that's okay. Just get a piece of paper out and get some art supplies and let's get started. All right, so I'm showing you a couple of options for what we're doing. And so if you have the kit, you will have the example step-by-step step of how to do this particular drawing. These are eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper. Okay, I am going to be using an eight, 11 by 14 piece of paper so you can see it here on the screen. Um, but since you at, um, have the kits already know how to do this one, I'm actually going to walk through how to do this one up here. Okay, let me show you what I am using. I am using watercolor paint by Artist Loft found at my local Michael's Craft Store. I am also using oil pastels. I believe these are also at the Michael's, uh, Day Daler and Ronnie. Yep. And I am using good old Crayola crayons. Now, if you have the art kit, what you have are um, temporary paints in primary colors, but you have a color wheel if you want to mix those colors. And um, you actually don't even have to use that. You could use that paint. You could add other um, um, supplies to your project as well. That's totally fine. So if you have crayons and if you have watercolor paint, or if you have oil pastels or even markers or colored pencils, my goodness, you can add this to your drawing, right? All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So what I have done is I have put this in my page in what's called landscape, which means that the long side of my paper is down. This is in portrait. And I want to do it in landscape because I like the feel of this. This almost feels like the fruit is sitting somewhere on a beach. <laughs> That's crazy, right? All right, I'm going to be using a Sharpie just so you can see it on my screen. But feel free to use a pencil and feel free to actually do this any way that you like. So I'm going to set it up so that it looks like how you see it here. But let's say, for example, since I'm putting the pineapple right front and center, you don't have to put it there. You could put it over to the side if you want, or you could follow this pattern as well and just put it in any quadrant that you'd like. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start with the um, pineapple. And what I'm looking at is kind of an oval shape, right? Do you remember when pineapples were so, so popular? <laughs> All right, so there's my oval. And then from there, I'm going to actually start to draw the leaves. So now you're going to see some of my overlapping lines because I'm using a Sharpie so that I'm going to have to get really clever when I start to put in uh, my color so you don't see it as well. But what I'm going to do is it's almost like if you were peeling a banana, you're going to take this shape and you're going to break it in half and then break it in half again. If you want to do like a pattern where it's V's, you could go all the way down the leaf like this. If you would rather just have a traditional shaped leaf, you can just leave a, a spine or a vein down the middle and just leave it like that, okay? I'm gonna actually put a little more shape and dimension in here. So I'm going to add more of those leaves. And if you can envision a pineapple, or maybe you have a pineapple in your house right now, you know how the leaves just kind of sit there almost like a crown on the top of the uh, fruit, right? And this one I'm going to go same way in a V formation. But then I'm going to add some that just sticks straight up like your traditional pineapple. And then maybe just put a vein down the middle. Okay. Now talked about this in other videos where if you want to see if you want to add more to your drawing, pick up the 
paper and put it in front of you as if it were sitting on a wall. So you really can get a sense of what it would look like away from your face and on a wall. Okay, so it's good that I have it up on a wall so I can see exactly where I might want to go with this. Now, you can do this a couple of different ways. Here, you can see that they're just doing X's going one direction and then X's going in the opposite direction. I'm actually going to do it this way. I'm going to go at an angle this way. This is very similar to what you see right here. And then I'm going to connect it the other way. So I guess it's pretty similar to that zigzagging motion, but it almost has a more organic feel to it. You see how I'm just kind of going across this way? And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add little dimples onto my pineapple in those little spaces. So, any pineapple pizza fans out there? I have a, a friend who is a vegetarian, and she is the one that introduced me to pineapple and mushroom pizza, and it is my absolute favorite. <laughs> All right, so we've got our pineapple here. So now let's go ahead and put this banana leaf over to the side. So here's how I like to do it. I like to start with that vein first and just kind of put it over to the side. And then from there, I'm going to start on the top half of that vein and I'm going to make some boxy shapes. And it's going to overlap a little bit onto the pineapple. Okay. And then I'm going to do the same on the bottom, but I'm also going to have an edge here. There's a line right there. And you can feel free to do this type of shape or something different. Okay. And I'm going to add Give it a little bit of texture. Okay, this would probably be a good time for me to add a horizon line. So I'm just going to put it right there. And then I know from there I want to still add my watermelon and I also still want to add my orange slice. So I could decide to do it a couple different ways. In this example, it's sitting right next to the pineapple. But as you're looking at your drawing, you can make a decision whether or not you want the pineapple to go on this side of your paper or to maybe overlap on both sides of the paper or do it as you see it here and put it to the right side of your paper. I think what I'm going to do is I really do like the orange slice and I think that I'm going to give that its focal point perhaps right here. So I'll leave the watermelon here where you see it in this example. Okay. But again, you could decide to make it all almost like a dancing version of this fruit and you could put it up here in the corner if you'd like. You could even do something like put that orange as a representation of the sun. It's all up to you. That's what the beauty of happy art is all about. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the pot with the um, watermelon. So you've got that kind of long line on the top. And then it's almost like a boat shape, isn't it? And then you want to add the rind. And then, of course, make those lines along the edge. And the details are really going to come in when you add the color, right? And so then, of course, you want the watermelon seeds. And maybe even if you want to show that, you know how they have the pink part, and then there's this white part, and then the green part. So you could add that in as well, that rind part that you see on a watermelon. It has been a while since I've had watermelon, I'll be very honest with you. <laughs> All right, so now let's go ahead and add in the orange slice. 
Now, I love the look of this orange slice here. Do you notice in this example, they actually didn't put the orange slice. They put more of a tropical flower there. Now, you can do that as well if you'd like. I'm going to show you how I'm going to do my orange slice, and you could actually do it a couple of different ways. You could almost make it look like a wagon wheel, but because I'm using a Sharpie and I won't be able to erase, I'm going to do it um, as I see it. So there's my circle. There's the outer edge. I'm losing my outer edge there. And then it almost looks like pizza slices inside. <laughs> so I'm going to try my best to make them as even as possible. Little bit. <laughs> and then I'm going to add the texture to the, the skin of the orange slice. Now, I'll step back and look at that. And as you can see, this is the base of the drawing, right? But as I start to paint it in, I can make some decisions. So again, how I was saying that idea of maybe putting an orange slice over in the sky, that would be a way to kind of balance this out. Or I could do very similar to what they've done here and they've made kind of a tropical looking sky. So it really is up to you. I like the idea of making the orange slice up in the sky. So that's what I'm going to do. And you go ahead and make the choices that are pleasing to your eye. You could maybe even think of another fruit that you might want to add, right? All right, so I'm pretty happy with how this has come out. So now I'm going to start to add color. Now, as you can see in this one, it's more traditional colors. You've got that yellow of the pineapple and orange um, of the orange rind, and then that really deep red and then the green of the watermelon. And then, of course, the um, almost tropical banana leaf. But you can decide to do some different colors as well, um, however you'd like. Now, you can do it a couple of different ways. I actually like to paint, and then especially when I'm using like tempera or acrylic paints, I will actually trace around the edges so it really causes my painting to pop. So if you're finished painting and you look at it and sometimes you're like, I feel like it hasn't really come alive. The way to change that is either to use a black ballpoint pen or to use a Sharpie or even to use something like crayons or acrylic paints and just trace around all your details and you will be surprised as how vibrant your painting looks once you're finished. All right, so from here, I'm gonna go ahead and start painting. I'm going to start with my watercolor paint and I am gonna start with more traditional colors first, like on the watermelon. think of anything really as far as the watermelon other than the song by Shawn Mendes um, which made that uh, the fruit a bit popular again right and of course summer months always um, allude to having the watermelon on your picnic table let's see have there been any sort of homages to the orange think of anything. Okay, so there's my red, reddish orange for the watermelon. And I'm going to uh, show you what I was talking about. So I'm going to go around and just maybe trace around certain things. So can you see how suddenly the painting just kind of comes alive just from adding this tracing around the edges? Okay. And then from there, I'll color in the watermelon seeds. Have you ever tried to cut a pineapple? Yeah, it's not that easy. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm still actually not very good at it. I have a friend who is Hawaiian and she makes some amazing mango salsa. And one of the ingredients is, of course, pineapple and also mango, uh, one of the main ingredients, obviously. And um, she has gotten really, really good at it. Um, and she's shown me a couple of tricks to do it, but can you believe I still prefer to just get a can of pineapple uh, than struggle with how to cut um, through a pineapple? I know. Just one of those things that it's not worth the frustration for me. <laughs> there we go. I'm adding in some of that color from my oil pastel. As you can see, just right over the top of that watercolor paint. It almost gives you that magazine feel to it. Yeah, there we go. Are there other colors of pineapple? I don't know. I haven't really looked that up. Oh, I don't know if I like that. Oh, I might have made a oops on that one. I don't know if I like that color in there. I think I thought I was going for an orange, but it didn't really come out the way I thought it would. All right, I might have to make a change with that, but I will leave that for right now. Yeah, it's almost too similar to the watermelon. All right, let me go ahead and start adding in the texture to the leaves. And you can decide whether you wanna blend a couple of different greens. Those of you who've gotten the art kit, you know, of course, how to make your green um, based on your color wheel. Well, you can also use your um, yellow or even your white paint and really add some more uh, gradation of your color green. So I would um, encourage you to play around with the shades of color. All right, I'm feeling a little better about the watermelon. <laughs> I mean, the, um, the pineapple, I was a little bit like, what did you do? Here is something I have learned from all my years of doing art. Sometimes if you feel really disappointed with how something looks, you have to just go away from it. Just walk away from it. Sometimes getting some perspective, let it dry, even coming back the next day. I've shared with you before that I am an art teacher and I used to teach art um, once a week. And so we would have this 45 minutes of class time and then the students would go away and some of them would be upset with maybe how their drawing looked or they didn't like it. And I would just say, please just let us put it in the cabinet for a week and then come back and take a look at it. And sure enough, half the time, they'd come back and they almost didn't even remember that they didn't like their drawing because have you ever heard like when you cook sometimes and they say it actually tastes better the next day? Something about when um, like the seasonings in a, in a um, recipe sit together and marinate for a while and they start to gel, it tastes so much better. Well, I have a theory that that happens sometimes with your um, art materials. When they sit together and have a little conversation, if you will, you come back and you see, oh, they have decided to work together. <laughs> All right, so from here, I've got that leaf. Now, I don't really want to put too much more green because I've already got green here in uh, the leaves. So maybe I'm going to go a different direction with that leaf. Perhaps do, let's see, maybe a purple. No, I already put purple in there. Oh, I should have thought about this before, shouldn't I have? How about I do a little bit of a gray? Let's see. I bet that gray will look so nice next to that green. Yeah, I like that look. Yeah, so I don't have to do the whole thing green. I just want to add a little bit of differentiation so that it doesn't look like the same leaf color that I have on the top of the pineapple. Right? So I could just put that in here. And of course I have my good old trusty uh, Crayola crayons here. 
so I can pick a color, add a little more to it. It's kind of a lilac color, so that's kind of nice. Now, you may decide you want to add more to the sky or maybe even to um, the background. Feel free to do that. Make this your own drawing, right? I'm just here to show you the basics and also be inspired right along with you as I'm working in real time. But you can feel free to take a break and come back and maybe be inspired to add a little more to what you're doing. All right, well, I want to go with a really bright orange for my orange slices. So I'm going to go ahead and color this in with the Crayola crayon. I'm going to do both of them like this, actually. So I've got my orange inside. Can you imagine even if we added like lemon or lime slices, how pretty this would look, especially as a representation in the sky, right? Sometimes I like to just get a little color down on the page and then I'll go back and add in my details. How about you? All right, in a moment I'm going to step back and see what I think about it. I like how it's coming together. How about yours? What do you think? All right, so I'm gonna try again with that orange that did not go so well the last time and see if I can pick a better shade of orange. All right, a little bit better. I still see that it has a little bit of brown tint. I actually share my <laughs> supplies at school and so sometimes they are not given back in the way that they have been brought to school. And so I probably need to go through my supplies and do a little spring cleaning with them. All right, so there's my orange. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of pink to it and see if I like how that looks. Let's, let's try that. All right, let's see, how does that look on camera? What do you think? Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. All right, what about you? Do you Are you willing to take a little bit of a risk and just try it, see what you think? There's no wrong way to do it. This is just playing, enjoying the afternoon or morning or whenever you're watching the video. And I really am so glad that you've joined me. Now, what if we did something like this where it's more of the dotting effect? Let's try that and see what we think about it. So if I mimic what I see, there's lots of dots here. Of course, you can do this with your tempera paint as well. It actually puts a nice pop in the picture. And then what it looks like is then you're taking your maybe a purple or a red and you're just adding lines in there, right? And letting that blend in. Okay. I think you could even do that with crayon if you wanted to. Let me see. I'm going to try a purple crayon and see what I think about that. Well, this is more, this is red violet. Let's see. Oh, I like that. Again, it brings a little bit more pop to the sky. And you could always let this dry a little bit and then come back in and just add more lines, right? Okay, I want to do some blue as well. That new blue I just found. And it looks like on the bottom here, they use more of a turquoise. So again, you can blend a little bit of your primary and your secondary color of blue and green and see if you can get close to that turquoise color that you see. Okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more pink to the sky.
All right, my friends, well, what do you think? I hope you enjoy how yours came out. Here's how mine came out. Very, very happy with it. So this is side by side with the other projects we, we have as examples here and here. I would love to see what yours looks like. Feel free to send it to me at my email address, wellofcreations at gmail.com. Make sure to like, subscribe, share this video if you enjoyed it. And I upload videos at least twice a week, and sometimes I'll do a bonus on the weekend. Thank you so much for stopping by. Check out my art kits that are over at Josie's Art School, and also I have sewing kits. All right, goodbye, everybody.